Okay, so today we're going to take a look at uh, infinite, or not infinite, but uh, uniform distributions of charge and finding the electric field at a point generated from them. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take basically a rod, um, you can imagine, a meter stick, basically. Pretty thin, and I'm going to put some negative charge all along this. So it starts, oops. So let's say it's here, and I have a total charge of negative Q. And that this has a length, L. I'm going to say that I'm going to put this rod at the origin. And it's aligned with the x-axis. There's a point back over here in empty space that we're going to call P, and it is some distance from the origin, in other words, it's off to the left here, and it is a distance, let's go with B, lowercase b. To be completely honest, I was going to use lowercase d, but since we're going to do some calculus, lowercase d will show up a lot, and I didn't want that to get confusing. So, it's some distance lowercase b. It could be 10 centimeters, it could be 10 meters, it could be anything, but it's just a number. It's a constant value. All right, we want to find the electric field here at point P. And how we can do that is by applying, well, some of the stuff that we've been using in class. We can find the electric field at a point from point particles. It'll be equal to KQ divided by R squared, where K is Coulomb's constant, which we could also write as, we will go ahead and write this out, one over four pi, epsilon naught, as we found with Gauss's law, times q over r squared. For simplicity, and to keep me from writing a whole bunch of extra stuff, I'm going to keep writing it as k, but understand that they're more or less the same thing. So, um, k is Coulomb's constant, or a series of other constants, depending on how you want to look at it. q is the charge that's actually generating the electric field, and r is how far the point that we're looking for the field at is from that charge. Now, this technically only applies to point particles. This is not a point particle. This is a large object. It's a uniform distribution of charge in a line. This is not a point particle. And if we pretend that it is, it turns out it's not going to get us the right values on. So what we're going to need to do is this. We can still use this setup, but what we're going to do is this. We're going to say that somewhere in here is a little tiny, infinitely small piece of charge. The total charge is negative Q. If I look at one infinitely small piece, in other words, imagine that I'm cutting this stick, this meter stick, into infinitely small little nudges, and for each of them, they're basically a whole bunch of little dots, little point particles. If it's a point particle, we can use this equation. If it's not a point particle, we're not necessarily safe using this equation, and in most cases, we can't use that equation. But if I look at an infinitely small little sliver of that meter stick, of that charged stick, I end up with a little point particle, a little dot. Well, this isn't the total charge, it's an infinitely small piece of it, so we would call that dq. d meaning infinitely small, and q meaning an infinitely small little piece of the charge. So what I can say is this. I have an infinite number of these little tiny dqs, and they all add up to negative q, collectively. And they're in a line like this. And each one of them is creating an electric field here at point p. So if I'm looking at this particular dq, if you will, it is making an electric field, an incredibly tiny electric field, because remember, this isn't a lot of charge, it's an infinitely small amount of charge. So I would go so far as to say the electric field that it creates there is an infinitely small electric field. The incredibly tiny little electric field that this tiny little charge generates, well, with it being negative, it will actually point towards the charge. 
Again, uh, electric field lines point the direction that a positive charge would go. If I'm looking just at this infinitely small dq, if I put a positive test charge there and let go of it, it would be attracted to the negative charge along this stick. So all of our electric fields are actually going to point to the right with my current setup. But this infinitely small piece of the electric field, this tiny piece of the electric field, it'll point to the right and it will be equal to k dq, so Coulomb's constant times the little tiny charge right here that we're working with that is creating this small part of the electric field divided by the distance between point P and Q squared. Well, DQ could be any one of these infinitely small charges. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm setting something up for some nondescript DQ, but then I'm going to integrate over the entire length. I'm going to find out what it is for each and every single little dq, this little piece of the electric field, and then I'm going to add up all of the dqs, and at the same time I'll be adding up all the electric field to find the total electric field. So what I need is something that describes dq by itself. Well, if I'm right here at the very beginning of the stick, then I'm at a distance of b, and if I'm at the very far end of the stick, I'm at a distance of b plus l, where this is l. If this is the origin, then I could say at any given point in here, I'm at a position x. So my distance for any dq is going to be b plus x. If I'm at the very beginning, x equals 0, b plus 0, hey, I'm right there at the beginning of the stick. If I'm at the very end, x is equal to l, so I would be b plus l. Anywhere in here, I would have b plus x b plus x, quantity squared, the distance between them squared. Great. So now I've got something that describes any of these individual tiny little infinitely small pieces of charge, and what I want to do is I want to integrate them. This is an infinitely tiny piece of the electric field, so if I add up all the little tiny pieces of the electric field, I will also need to add up all the little tiny charges. That's what I'm going to do is I add all of these up, they will add their electric fields together, and their total effect of all of them will give me the total electric field at point P. So I'm going to end up with this. If I integrate all the, in, all the little tiny slices of the electric field, I'm going to end up with this. My electric field is going to be equal to the integral. I'm going to integrate this side from x equals 0 all the way over to x equals L. So I'm going to go from 0, the origin, where the stick begins, all the way to the far end of the stick, which is L. Those are my limits of integration. My charges start here at 0. I'm going to add all those up until I get over to L. So I'm integrating from 0 to L. Of k, which is Coulomb's constant, dq over b plus x quantity squared. Here's my problem. I need to integrate through, well, I've got two variables. I've got x, which describes how far I'm going here, and I've got q, which is the charges. Infinitely small pieces of charge. I need to either get x in terms of q, so that I have a variable and the differentially small piece so I can actually integrate it, or I need to get dq in terms of x. The easier one to do by far is to get dq in terms of x, and to, to do that we look at what we've talked about before, lambda, the linear charge density. And city. Okay. We know that the overall charge of this thing is negative Q and it is spread uniformly over a length L. The linear charge density is the total charge divided by the total length. And what that's saying is if I had, say, one coulomb per one meter, so if this were one coulomb that I added onto this meter stick, one coulomb onto the entirety of the meter stick, then I would have one coulomb per meter. If I went only halfway, so my length was only half of it, I would only have half a coulomb of charge. If I did a quarter, then I would have a quarter coulomb charge here. 
the density is uniform. And if I look for a small sliver of it, some very tiny amount of charge, dq, it would be some infinitely small thickness here. I have the charge divided by the length that it is applied over. Well, if I have an infinitely small amount of charge, it's applied over an infinitely thin little strip. We could almost call that dl, some infinitely small piece of the length. Although with our setup, the length of this, as we've got an infinitely small piece of the length here, that's also the same as an infinitely small piece of x. We're talking about infinitely small little sliver right in there. It's both an infinitely small piece of my length L, and it also happens to be an infinitely small step in the x direction. Hence, dx. Since lambda is equal to negative q over L, which we'll use later on as well, it is also equal to dq, infinitely small piece of charge, divided by the length that that's applied over, which is dx, an infinitely small piece of x. With this, we get the following. If lambda equals dq dx, and technically it also equals negative q over L, we can get the following. That dq is equal to lambda times dx, multiplying both sides by dx. And incorporating what lambda is actually equal to, we end up with negative q over L times dx dq equals negative q over L dx, which we now put back in here. If dq is equal to negative q over L dx, then I can replace this, and we end up with the following equation. E equals our total electric field at point P will be equal to the integral from 0 to L of k times dq, which we just found was negative q over l dx, divided by quantity of, I used, b plus x, my distance between them, quantity squared. k, q, l, and technically b are constants. But since b is added in this weird term, I'm not able to remove it from the integral. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, removing my constants from my integral. And I get negative uh, q k over l times the integral from 0 to l of dx over b plus x quantity squared. Now, there are other ways that I could have set this up where the meter stick was not at the origin that might make this a little bit easier on the integration, but I wanted to show you this so that you're aware that sometimes this shows up. I've told you that my meter stick begins at x equals 0, begins at the origin, and the point that we're looking at is at negative b, some distance behind the y-axis. So what that sets up is this. I need to integrate dx over the quantity of b plus x squared. Now, there are probably a couple ways that you could go about this, but I'm going to bring in u substitution. What I'm going to say is this. u is equal to b plus x, and therefore du will be equal to the basically derivative of this. We end up with, well, b, its derivative just goes away. It's a constant. And so we actually find that du is equal to dx. What that allows me to do is this. I can rewrite this integral. And again, I admit that I could have done this problem differently where you wouldn't have to do u substitution. But we're going to take a look at the slightly more complex case because I've told you that the stick begins at the origin. The electric field will be equal to negative q k over l integral. I'm going to switch this over from x's to u's temporarily so that I can integrate it more easily. I have du over u squared, where u is b plus x, and we know that du is equal to dx. <coughs> I can now integrate this. You'll notice that I dropped my limits of integration. 
Technically, I can leave those in, 0 to L, but those limits of integration were the limits for x, and I'd need different limit limits of integration, or possibly, I should say, different limits of integration for u, since I've changed what I'm working with. That being said, I'm going to change it back to x after evaluating the integral. So I'm just going to leave the limits of integration and save the time and trouble. What I'm going to end up with is this. The electric field at point P is equal to negative Q K over L. And when I integrate this, this is U raised to the negative 2. So the integral would be negative 1 times the quantity of U raised to the negative 1, evaluated from technically 0 to L. Well, technically not 0 to L. But before I evaluate that integral, I'm going to switch it back. When I switch my variable, when I do U substitution, Technically, the limits of integration would change to fit this new function that we're using. However, when I change u back into the original function that it was, my limits would return to 0 to L. So technically, what I have written here isn't quite right, but it's saving me the trouble of finding my new limits of integration because this is what is actually correct. If u is equal to b plus x, negative 1, this is a correct statement. Technically, my limits of integration would probably need to be something different here. I haven't actually looked into it because usually when you do u substitution, if you have limits of integration, you'll change it to u, evaluate the integral, and then put it back to this, and your limits will come back as they actually originally were. All right, neither here nor there. My electric field is going to be negative kq, or qk in this case, l times negative 1. You know what? I'm just going to get that negative 1 to multiply by that negative and we'll forget it existed. We've got this raised to the negative 1, so I need to evaluate it with L. So that's 1 over B plus L minus, that's my upper limit, minus 1 over B plus 0, which is, actually, let's just write it like this, 1 over B plus 0. This is my electric field. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. You don't have to, but I like to see it a little bit more clearly. Um, let's see. These are fractions, so if I want to add or subtract them, I need a common denominator, positive kqk over L. Um, easiest, simplest way to get a common denominator is to cross multiply. So I'm going to have b over b times b plus L. Multiply this one by b over b, minus uh, b plus l over b times b plus l. Uh, these are the same, so I end up with the following. qk over l times the quantity of b minus b minus l, because it's minus this whole thing here, the negative would distribute, over b times b plus l. B minus B is zero, and so we end up with following. Simplifying this a little bit, which is not necessarily required, because it's just going to be the same thing, would be K or QK over L times the quantity of negative L over uh, B times B plus L. You'll notice that my L's actually cancel out here, and at least from the integral, I finally end up with this. Uh, negative kq over b times b plus l. Let's talk about this because we're not quite done. We could have left it as it was back up here. This is perfectly fine. I wanted to clear this up a little bit because it's a little harder to see here. There are a few things that I want you to double check. And this is a great thing to do whenever you're dealing with variable-only manipulation. Double-check your units. To get the electric field, we need Coulomb's constant times one charge, which we've got, divided by a distance squared. Well, B plus L, whatever those are, it could be 30 centimeters plus one meter. That's 1.3 meters times 30 centimeters. Any way you look at it, the argument in here has units of length. And this has units of length, and since they're multiplied, we would end up with Coulomb's constant times a charge 
divided by a length squared. In other words, meters times meters, meters squared. In other words, our units, oops, it's back over here. Our units do work out. The electric field should be Coulomb's constant times a charge divided by a distance squared. We do actually end up with that. Do yourself a favor and check that when you get to the end of a problem. If your units do not work out, you are guaranteed to have made a mistake. Your answer cannot be correct if your units do not work out. Finally, I've got a vector sign on this, and there's one thing that I need to clean up. The negative sign came from me working with just the numbers themselves, but I want to backtrack to what we said before. For each of these, because this is a negative charge, we know that the electric field will actually point to the right, and this negative is not actually telling me the correct direction. It's keeping track of something different. This is technically the magnitude. My electric field at P will be equal to positive K, Q over B, B plus L, B times B plus L. Positive because, well, I should actually say that this is in the X direction. Or I could say that the electric field at P is equal to K, Q over B, B plus L in the I hat direction, positive I hat. Now, why this ends up working out, remember back to what I had talked about before. When you're dealing with the equations that look like Coulomb's law, when you're dealing with force and electric field, the positives and negatives only tell you if something is attracting or repelling. Well, for the force, definitely. For the electric field, it tells you things about positive or negative radial direction. In short, as I mentioned before, the positives and negatives in the force and the electric field equation may not actually mean what you think they mean. When you're finding the electric field, a vector, ask yourself at the end, which way does it point? This electric field will point towards this negative charge because a positive charge would move towards it. Electric fields always point the direction a positive charge would go, and therefore, our correct answer would be something like this. Positive KQ over B times B plus L. Again, you could also leave it in terms of these. This is a perfectly good answer as well.